Welcome to Inside the Honors College. We believe that wisdom and virtue is found when we learn together. Join us as we take an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. I'm Thayna Esteves. And I'm Ellie Overman, and today we're going to get to listen to Roxy. She was such a gift to listen to, you guys. She models this kind of intellectual hospitality that I just admire so much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just so genuine, you know? Mm-hmm. Like you can tell that when she says things that she really cares about you, and then it's just coming from the heart. It's just so comforting and kind. And I, for one, absolutely loved her just rhetoric and the conversation around diverse spaces and what that really looks like and how like that you can still have your own ideas in these spaces and that growth for each person is going to look different and that that's okay. Mm-hmm. And if you can't tell, I just loved everything about her conversation. So... No holding everyone back. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Roxy, hello, friend. Hi, Ellie. How's it going today? Doing pretty good. What about you? I'm doing really well. I just got out of... I've been on a lot of calls today. I had therapy this morning and then colloquy and then a meeting and now I'm here. So I'm just getting all of the the life-giving conversations in today. You deserve a nap after this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I might take one. I might just definitely go do. Have, have some nap time. Um, yeah, totally, totally. Okay, well, let's get right into our icebreaker question. What is one way that you have felt loved during quarantine? Um, so there's probably a couple different ways other than constant snuggles with my dogs. Aww. I would have to say um, whenever my parents bring me like little plates of fruit Um, Mm -hmm. Whenever I'm studying or in class or watching some pre-recorded lectures, because I'm always in front of the computer, which is a little tough to be dealing with. Um, And so my parents always like to bring me some cut up fruit that is just like really colorful and a lot of my favorite different fruits. So I really appreciate that just because they take the time out of their days to do something nice for me. Oh, that is so sweet. Do you have like a favorite fruit platter situation? Are you like more tropical, more Mm. like apples? Do you have an opinion? I definitely prefer summer, okay. more like summery fruits, um, okay, okay. just like whatever is more in season in the summer. So like a lot of mangoes, mm-hmm. peaches, nectarines, apricots, plums, Yum. Oh my goodness. pineapple. I'm really okay with anything. Any yeah. fruit, I'll eat it. I love it. I love that. Oh my goodness. That makes me so happy. I feel like that's so unique. Um, fruit platters, everybody. If you're on, when we're on campus with Roxy, just cut her up some fruit and she'll be a, a happy camper. That's noted. It's, it's sort of in, in my brain now. Okay. So let's hop right kind of into your honors story. How did you hear about the honors college and why did you decide to be a part of it? Um, so I didn't even know there was an honors college <laughs> when I applied to APU. That was my bad. I applied to APU kind of on a whim. Um, and the same thing happened with the honors college. I just got a couple different emails. So I was like, hey, like this is the honors program. You look like a great candidate. Like maybe you would want to apply. And I was like, mm. Mm. and then I did apply <laughs> the day the application was due. Oh my word. That's so <laughs> not so, Roxy. That's yeah. not a Roxy thing to do at all. I know, right? And so it was very uh, kind of like spontaneous. I was just like, you know, it doesn't hurt to apply. If I get in, that's great. If not, that's fine. Like I'm already right. into APU, you know? Right. And so I kind of just applied um, just for like the heck of it, I guess. Yeah. And then. I ex- like I learned I got into the Honors College and then I started learning more about the Honors College and I was mm-hmm. like this is a really cool because mm-hmm. it was like unlike any other program I'd learned about at literally any other school I had looked yeah. at. Yeah. And like some of the other schools had honors programs but mm-hmm. they were nothing like what APU was offering. Mm. And so I was like Ooh. this looks really interesting and like I had um graduated with my associate's degree already Mm -hmm. by the time I graduated high school. So like I had finished all my GEs. So in theory, it would have been much easier for me to just say no to the honors college and just like finish in two years with my bachelor's degree. Yeah. But I just felt like I needed to be at the honors college. Mm. I was like, this is something so unique that they're offering. And I wouldn't be here in this moment in my life unless I needed to have been here, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I was like, I feel like I don't know, the God, the universe, whatever, (laughs) like pushed me towards the honors college Mm because everything I did was just very spontaneous with APU. I was like, man, I'll just apply just to apply, you know? And so the same thing happened with the honors college. And then I just really fell in love with the program. And I called 
Rhonda. <laughs> <laughs> my Multiple favorite times. yes as so many times god bless Rhonda for having to deal with me <laughs> and my consistent emails and mm. I was on the phone with a bunch of different interns and they really helped me with a lot of it because I was like yeah. I don't know what I'm doing you right. know and it was just the community of APU was everything and the honors mm-hmm. college was so welcoming and mm-hmm. no matter how many times I emailed them they were always so quick to respond and so friendly and always down to help me mm. with all of my questions and there were a lot of them so like that really made the biggest difference for me wow that is so lovely you're kind of talking about like APU and the honors college were really unique what Mm -hmm. was specifically unique about it I think the first thing that caught my eye was like the curriculum for the honors college yeah because I was like hmm like Mm. I really like the no tests no quizzes yeah I was so happy when I learned about that I was like hallelujah and so I was super excited about that and then I started learning more about the curriculum and I really liked how it was kind of like a stepping stone where it was like Mm. one class moved to the other and it wasn't like you know pick from these classes it was like you progress through the curriculum and I really loved that because it was really unique um Mm -hmm. because like all of my, I'm a sociology major. So like mine is like, these are your core classes. And then these are like pick from these electives or whatever. And so I really liked how it was like a, they would establish a foundation. And then every semester we would build off of that. And I loved how we have the opportunity to do like the Oxbridge classes and to be able to like work in a very student led environment that's very much so like the faculty is there to help us in every way that they can, but also gives us the room to kind of lead ourselves. Yeah, so cool. So now that you've been a part of APU for a semester and a half, essentially, how have you been challenged through your experience in the Honors College? And how have you grown as a scholar through that? Excellent question. Um, I think (laughs) it was very challenging coming into the Honors College. Uh, A lot of that being just like, we weren't on campus. And so having to start college on zoom is very intimidating Mm -hmm. I was like I don't know anybody and I had just recently moved to Orange County too so I really didn't know anybody like I didn't have my support system with my friends that I normally do and so it was uh very daunting for me and so that was really tough because I was really concerned about how I was going to be able to do online learning because it's not something I really excel at I love being in a very studious academic environment and I love going to classes with other people and being able to like bounce ideas off one another and so it was pretty tough for me just thinking that like I was gonna fail everything I thought like my grades were just gonna plummet I was not gonna have the motivation to do anything which was super tough but the honors college has just been such a rock for all of its students and like the many opportunities that they've given us, even just like staying after colloquy to chat and doing like movie nights with one another or playing among us and like all of the fireside chats. And I think we have like the upcoming unplugged session, like all of those things that the honors college has been doing has just been like so monumental and keeping me connected, which has helped so much with my studies because like I'll, like call my friends and be like, Hey, you guys want to talk about like XCOM ideas, which has just been a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) because like coming into the honors college was a new experience. And then having to figure out, like, I don't know what a commonplace is. I don't know what an XCOM is. What does a portfolio look like? (laughs) I've done one and I'm still not sure what a portfolio is supposed to look like. So I think like I've grown a lot in the sense that I've had to adapt and I've had to kind of learn everything again. Like Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to use a lot of the same study habits as I was using success successfully in high school. And so like I've had to kind of figure it out all on my own, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which isn't a bad thing because it forced me to figure out some more strengths within myself and to really work on some of my weaknesses so that I would still be able to thrive in an online environment, which I'm very grateful for because now I feel like I'm confident in doing school online and in person. I'm very excited. (laughs) Fingers crossed we're okay to go back on campus. You know, I definitely do not want to do another semester online. But should it come to that, I feel more prepared now. Mm -hmm. And then as a scholar, I think I've definitely grown just like 
in the way I think about things. And I, I don't really know how to put this into words, but I think it's so amazing because I've never really taken like a philosophy class or anything that really like pushed me to higher level thinking. And like a lot of the discussions I had in class in high school were great. They were like similar to colloquy where we did a lot of uh, Socratic seminars, mm -hmm. but like I had never read anything that was like on par with the Republic. Right. Or Nick and McKean ethics. Like that was all very new to me. And so I think I've definitely been pushed in the sense that I've had to really think on a different level. Like a lot of times something that is like, it's very uncomfortable for me to do that because I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm smart enough to like comprehend a lot of what these texts are saying. And so I think that as a scholar, I've grown in the sense that like, I've come to understand that everyone has their own interpretation of things, and that's not a measure of intelligence. And if anything, that diversity has enriched my mm. academic experience, mm -hmm. because like in colloquy settings, I'll be able to share something that I took away from it or something I right. noticed. But like another person will share something they noticed through a completely different perspective. And mm -hmm. it forces me to see something from a different viewpoint. And I'm just learning more and more from mm -hmm. everybody. And so I think like as a scholar, I've had to grow in the sense that I've really been pushed to, I guess not really, like I, I haven't been pushed to my limits, but mm -hmm. I've been pushed to extend those boundaries mm -hmm. and like realize that I still have so much more to learn and to grow. It's not a bad thing that there is so much left for me to do. You know, like it yeah. doesn't mean that I'm behind everybody else. It right. just means that there's this infinite sea of knowledge floating around. And like I have like come to realize that, yes, it's very difficult to understand Aristotle and oh Plato yes. and <laughs> all of those. You know, it's very difficult to com comprehend a lot of the information that they're saying, but I'm still able to do it. Yeah. And I think like that has been such a huge eye opener for me in the sense that like I never would have thought that I was right. going to be able to like have intellectual discussions about like the art of war or oh like word. Babette's Feast. Yeah. And I hadn't even heard of a lot of these texts. <laughs> and so like the first text we had to read was literally The Prince. And I opened it and I started reading it. And I was like, Mom, is it too late to drop out of the honors college? <laughs> It was so bad. But like over the last semester and a half, I've just learned that like I can do a lot more yeah. than I thought. And so mm -hmm. I think that has been the biggest thing for me just yeah. because I like I've fallen in love with a lot of these texts that I didn't think I would. Because like just because I don't agree with something doesn't right. mean that I can't respect it. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I think like I've grown a lot is that because I'm like, I'm kind of on the same level as Aristotle. Like, who would have thought? Crazy. You know, definitely not on the same level. <laughs> but at you all. can comprehend like, and engage with Aristotle exactly. in really profound ways, which is huge. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I think like that is just, I don't know. It, and I'm struggling to put it into words, but it's such a monumental change for me mm -hmm. because like I've realized that. I'm kind of awesome. You kind of are. <laughs> and I don't mean to toot my own horn. But like everybody in the honors college is just so amazing in their own ways because mm. we're all able to, as you said, like engage in these texts and be able to have thoughtful discussions and right. be able to apply them to our own lives. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like soul shattering. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's yeah. like, it's crazy to wrap my head around the fact that like, at least in our class, right. we're all like, what, 18, 19? Yeah. And we're having all these really <laughs> yeah. profound discussions, engaging with texts that are thousands of years older than us. Right. It's just like, I never thought I would be here in my life, mm -hmm. in my first year of college. But I am so grateful that I am where I am now. And like, I wouldn't change that for anything. Wow, I love that. And I love this idea that you're talking about, about people bringing really diverse and different ideas mm -hmm. and even these texts bringing different ideas and just sitting with it and saying like, oh my goodness, I'm grateful to be in this space rather than like it breeding tension. I love that that's been yeah. your experience. I think that is mm -hmm. so, so cool. So now that you've kind of gone on this baby honors Zoom journey, okay, <laughs> now that you're, as you said, your soul has been mm -hmm. shattered. If you were talking to a prospective student, what is one piece of advice you would give them? Um, I would definitely have to say that there isn't like a set mold for the mm. honors college student. Mm -hmm. 
And so for me, like I struggled a lot with that. I was like, like, is the honors college going to be a good fit? Like, am I smart enough? Am I Mm -hmm. Christian enough? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to be able to keep up with the workload? And so for me, it was like a lot of those like doubting myself and Mm -hmm. just like wondering Mm -hmm. whether I was going to be enough, whether I was going to be smart enough and, you know, motivated enough. And so for me, like that was a huge insecurity that I wasn't going to be able to keep up, that I wasn't going to be, you know, on the same intellectual level as a lot of my other classmates, that I would be Mm -hmm. falling behind, that my teachers would think I was dumb, stuff like that. And so I think that I have come to learn that that's not the case at all. Like the Honors College does an, an amazing job of really like nurturing and fostering its students where they're at mm-hmm. and helping them progress. Yeah. And like progress doesn't happen overnight and mm-hmm. it's not something that's exactly linear and it doesn't follow a schedule, but mm-hmm. like any positive progress is still an improvement in my mind, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think that that has just been so amazing for me because like I guess my biggest doubt was like, I'm not going to fit in because I'm not Christian enough. Like Mm. I don't read my Bible every single day. Lord knows I don't go to church every single Sunday. You know, I am not the person who only listens to worship music. (laughs) I have a tough time engaging in prayer. And so stuff like that, I was like, oh, I'm going to fit out. Like I'm not going to fit in, you know, like I'm going to stand out. It's not going to be good. Like I'm, I don't know, like I'm going to be left out of a lot of things because like I'm not going to be able to understand a lot of what other people are saying right? are like yeah. common interests are going to be gone. Cause like people are going to think, Oh, like she's not a good Christian. Like I don't mm-hmm. want to be friends with her or something mm-hmm. like that. And so like, that was one of my biggest insecurities, but like coming into the honors college, honors college, I've realized that's not entirely the case. Mm-hmm. And that like, there isn't a set standard mm-hmm. or like you need to be here no. to be in the honors college. Right. You know, you need to be on this level. You need to be doing A, B, C, and D. It's not the case at all. Like I think the best thing about the Honors College is that there is such a diversity in backgrounds mm-hmm. yeah, and like in personal beliefs and just the way that we all individually think and process everything that's going on <laughs> us yeah. in the world. And I yeah. think that is just so unique because it's, you know, the Honors College has opened up a space for us to interact with one another and meet people from all over the world who have completely different stories than we do, mm-hmm. who maybe, you know, aren't on the same level religiously. Like some people have a stronger relationship with God, which isn't a bad thing. Right. You know, and it's not like I'm not saying it's better to have a stronger relationship or it's worse to not or whatever. Right. That's not the case at all. But I think that like for me, it's just been so enriching mm. because I've learned that like everybody's enough for the honors college if that makes sense Mm. it's like I don't know it's just very unique because I've never really had this experience in an academic setting and like my high school is very competitive yeah um because it was a it was like a magnet school Mm -hmm. and so we were known in the district as like the smart school like we were the nerds yeah so if I was like oh like I go to this high school people are like oh you must be like super smart and I was (laughs) like not really the case (laughs) thank you but I was like that's not really the case it's more like kids have the passion for learning they Mm want to be there they want to push themselves they want to do better Mm -hmm. and like it it did foster a very competitive environment I will admit that but like the honors college is not like that at all Mm. and I think that's so amazing because like I can call one of my friends Mm. and be like I just got like a 95 on this (laughs) XCOM like freaking out and like they might have gotten like a 97 or they might have gotten like an 82 or whatever but they will still nonetheless be so happy Mm -hmm. for you and like be so uplifting and encouraging which is I don't know for me it made all the difference yeah and like picking where I want to go to school. Mm -hmm. And it's just this community that's so wonderful where like, no matter who you are, you will always find a space in the honors college. Mm. And like the faculty will always open up like areas where you can voice your own opinion. Right. And like, even with me, sometimes I'm like, I want to share something called me, but I'm too nervous to unmute myself or like, I don't want to disrupt other people who might have things to say. But like Dr. Mosher will like, no <laughs> like in my tell you can see and he'll, like private yeah. message me and he's like hey did you want to like share something and if I like respond yes then he'll like open up a space exclusively wow. 
for yeah. me to help me express my voice and express my own opinion, mm-hmm. which is really unique because I've never really had that before mm-hmm. where it was kind of like a, you really had to like fight for it. You had to be yeah. really aggressive. And I'm not that aggressive person <laughs> when it comes to like discussions. Yeah. And so I think it's just so unique because the faculty is there mm-hmm. to notice your differences mm-hmm. and to point them out, not in a bad way, right. but to point them out to see like we can learn from these. Mm-hmm. You, like every student has something unique to offer. So there's never going to be one person who like is the honors college. Right. Like they are the perfect fit. Yeah. They are exactly what the honors college wants in a prospective student. Like there's never going to be a person like that. And I think that our differences make us stronger because they make us a more diverse and cohesive community. Like yeah. those are kind of, those two words don't really match up <laughs> right. like diverse and cohesive. But I think that like our diversity brings us together mm. because it just like, there's so much to learn from other people. Mm -hmm. And I think the Honors College really does a great job of recognizing that and trying to foster a safe space where we can do that. And I think like, even if you are insecure, Mm -hmm. don't be ashamed about it. Like we Mm -hmm. all were. I Uh was incredibly terrified. Like I would literally start crying at like three in the morning being Mm -hmm. like, did I make the worst decision of my life? Saying that I was going to go to the Honors College at APU, you know? It was, I was a mess. It's okay. <laughs> I was a mess. We, we was all kind of were. The more people I talked to, the more I realized we were all kind of in this boat of like, what if I'm not enough for exactly. this? Exactly. And that has mm-hmm. just not been the case. Exactly. And it's just, it's such an amazing community. Truly, the APU community is just wonderful. Mm-hmm. Like, they are so fantastic. And the Honors College is just like a subsect of that community, right. which just really does an amazing job at. I guess, like, really helping each and every single student grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, we're not all on the same level. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. The Honors College isn't promoting a message that we need to be on that same Mm -hmm. level. But they do an amazing job at helping us all get to a higher level. Mm -hmm. Like, helping each and every student grow individually and go through however long they might spend in the Honors College. But knowing that when they come out of it, they will come out as an improved person. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that they need to be compared to the person next to them or to the student who's in the same colloquy. You know, just because everybody progresses differently doesn't lessen the value of one's progress. Yeah. And so I think like that is the biggest advice that I would give. It's just like, don't worry about not being enough. Mm. You are more than enough Mm -hmm. just being yourself. Yeah. So make the most of it when you come into the honors college, express yourself whenever you feel comfortable to express yourself, you know, really take every opportunity that is handed to you and try to make the most out of your experience because we only have four years and this first year has gone by so quickly. Like I was just thinking about it the other day and I was like, I can't believe we're almost done <laughs> yeah. with our second semester right. in college. Oh, sorry. My dogs are barking. They're totally good. <laughs> My bad. I, I don't know if you can hear them, but it's just like, it's crazy to think how fast it has gone by. So I think for prospective students, like don't waste that first year thinking you're not good enough. Mm, yeah. Because I did. Like yeah. I, I wasted a lot of that first semester wow. thinking that I wasn't good enough. Like I wasn't going to make friends, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Second semester, I moved in to a random <laughs> middle of nowhere cabin in Wisconsin My goodness. with four other girls. Right. And like, it's just crazy to see how much I have grown mm-hmm. in less than a year. Right. And that was with the insecurity that I wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. So like, don't let that cloud your mind. Yeah. Don't let that come in and distract yourself and like hinder all of the opportunities that are being thrown at you, take everything that you possibly can and do the most that you can in four years because you are enough. You will always be enough. Yeah. And I think that is the biggest piece of advice I could give. Oh my goodness. Roxy, I am just so encouraged every time I talk to you. Thank you so much for sharing just your story with us this past year. I really, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on the podcast. I hope that I could help in whatever way no, for sure. I don't even know what that looks like but I hope it was helpful no it for sure was I think people will be really encouraged by this thank you for coming of course thank you so much 
Gosh, it was just such a treat to listen to Roxy. She, this whole conversation just put a smile on my face. I especially loved this conversation about universal truth in particular stories and the way that Roxy kind of exemplifies that and how we are pursuing that truth in the Honors College and that each person brings something different to the table in that conversation. It was just so enlightening and led me to a lot of reflection. So I'm just super grateful for her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have yet to have a conversation with Roxy where I didn't leave that conversation being like, wow, I have so much to think about. I feel so good about life. There's just so much to do and look forward to. So yes, I hope everyone else has got to to feel that as well because she's an absolute pleasure to listen to. And I think her conversation around, you know, measuring ourselves against others and that, you know, we just really don't need to do that. And that we're supposed to be a community that's growing together, going through the mistakes together, learning together. And that's what we should be focusing on. So absolutely, I couldn't have said it better myself, Ellie. Yeah, thank you so much, Roxy, for talking to us. And thank you for taking an inside look at a community dedicated to educating the next generation of disciples and scholars. See you next time on Inside the Honors College.